Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show, highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community, and neighborhood. And now, from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. I hope I'm not too close, Dorothy. No, you're good. I'm not reverberating? No. Okay. I'll, it's just in your head. I'm going to module. Okay. <laughs> um, we're at July 4th weekend. Yep. Uh, it's crazy how fast this year is going. It's flying by, isn't right. it? Right. Kids are out of school. Um, the production of Carousel just ran the last two nights. Um, there, there's a lot of activity. Summer camps are in full gear the rec departments are um, chock full of kids and it reminds a lot of us about what is so special um, about the area that we live in Moore County and in particular today we're going to be speaking about uh, Southern Ponds. Um, I have a friend who just purchased a home here in the Knollwood area in Southern Pines and it was a home that was built in 1940 um, and he made some decisions about why he wanted to move here um, for his seven and three-year-old children. And um, he's living in what I refer to as one of the Currier and Ives neighborhoods in Southern Pines. And interestingly enough, and it's a small world, so I'm standing at Dunkin' Donuts the other day trying to get a cup of coffee, and there was an article in the pilot that had the pilots on the table and I read a letter to the editor about an article that our next guest wrote, and I'm talking about Chris Larson, who also moved here from another state. And uh, the title of the article that he wrote was A Few Things That Make This Place Extra Special. Well, it wasn't the article that I, wrote, I read at the Dunkin' Donuts. It was the letter to him. Did you happen to see that? I have not, no. Okay. Um, so uh, it was a terrific letter, and it made me go back online and research the uh, article. And uh, you're a columnist for the pilot, okay? So Chris is going to be joining us. Um, uh, my future guest is Nick Marshburn, who um, just about six weeks ago or so, seven weeks ago, uh, completed the financing and the purchase of a, of a home that is a period home that if you took a couple of choice photographs of Southern Pines and you wanted to send it to some friends who never had been here before. When that house will be completed, uh, that would be one of the homes in one of the neighborhoods um, and one of the corner lots um, that people would want to see because a picture speaks a thousand words. Our third guest, uh, who has been a guest before, is Francie Thompson uh, from Total House and Flooring. And Francie's been on um, the show in many different capacities in the past um, talking about her design business um, and it's interesting uh, Nick I have to tell you you and I share one thing and we share a couple of things in common uh, but one of the things we share in common was our love for older homes our ability to want to recreate them but keep the spirit intact and um, I used uh, Francie or Francie used me <laughs> when, I should say, when we did the Bush Cottage on Ash Street in downtown Southern Pines, which was built in 1908, and it was at a point where it was almost a teardown. And today, um, it stands as one of the pristine homes, single-family homes, in, in the truly in the downtown area. Um, Nick, you're, um, you came from where, um, from the Raleigh area? Well, I'm, um, <coughs> I grew up outside of Atlanta. Yeah. That's where I grew up until I was about 18 years old. Uh, lived in South Georgia for a while and started my career in North Texas. And I've moved around a lot since I've been married. I was married in 2004. Um, but most recently we moved to Raleigh yep. uh, for a promotion, thinking that that I would want to settle in Raleigh because I like Raleigh and I still do like Raleigh um, because my parents are both from eastern North Carolina and uh, I grew up in Georgia but I always felt like North Carolina was home you know so it, should the chance should I ever the opportunity present itself 
mm-hmm. to move back to North Carolina, I wanted to take advantage of that, and so it did. And I thought uh, Raleigh would be the place I wanted to move, but when we moved up there, it just didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. And um, so one thing led to another, and I met you through mm-hmm. Francie, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And um, the first one of the, I think, she, well, she said, you need to call, you know, are you willing to work with this guy? And I said, well, what's in it for you? I, I, you know, I don't... I, she right. said, well, he's just the best. And I said, okay, I, I like him already. And she, and you were like, he works all the time. Yeah. It was like 9 o'clock on a Wednesday or something. She said, you can call him right now. I said, all right, I'm going to call him. <laughs> and so I called you, and you you the first question you asked me was, why Southern Pines? And I thought, okay, I like this guy already because what an important question. Mm-hmm. you know? Because mm-hmm. if you think about Southern Pines, mm-hmm. to, you really have to go out of your way to get here. I mean, it's off the beaten path. There's really no reason why you would drive here. I guess if you were lived in Raleigh and you're going to Columbia, maybe, but... Right. And the, so that was appealing to me. And when you asked me that question, that led us mm-hmm. to where we are today. And as a matter of fact, um, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, so why Southern Pines ever since we closed and we moved down here? I mean, everybody's asked me that. Is that so, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your family, your friends from out of state who've never been here? Uh, yeah, everybody. They're very interested. That's one reason Chris is with us, because um, he moved here from, um, I what, guess, Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have family who live here. I do. And you've discovered it, and you were living in an urban area. Um, I got I get tired of coming down here for the holidays, so I moved here so I wouldn't have to come here. Right. Um, and it's the people come for the golf, and they stay for the people, and... For um, all the things that make this town great, and it's a small town feel. It's really right. My friends from New York will come here and walk down Broad Street, and ten people will say, "Hold me by name," and he'd say, "That would drive me nuts." Right. And I love it. It's where you want to be. Uh, can I? I want to say you. You mentioned um, people come here for the golf and they stay for the people, and I so. When, when I realized that Raleigh was not the place that we were going to settle, I almost had too many options because I could live in Greensboro. I could live in Winston-Salem. I could have lived in um, Charlotte. I could have lived in Greenville, South Carolina, which is a nice place. And so I will tell you, when I, when I was first on this journey, I remember mentioning to my dad, Hey, look at look at Pinehurst, Southern Pines. It's right in the middle of my district, and I don't mean want to offend anybody, but he he was like, oh, you don't want to move there. That there's just a resort area, mm-hmm. you know, that people mm-hmm. from up north, bunch of Yankees like Bill down there, <laughs> and I, and he just poo pooed it. So I was like, okay, okay, I guess that's a bad idea, and I decided to drive through town on my way back from Columbia one time, and I had been here one time before, mm-hmm. and because of golf. And and when as soon as I hit you know Moore County, you can feel it. And I just I, I thought to myself, wow, this place is awesome. So in January, I had a meeting set up with Francie in um, Atlanta for the show. And I not, first of all, I thought Francie, that's the coolest name I've ever heard in my life, besides my wife, who's Summer. Well, people don't under people don't know what you do. I mean, there's a reason you knew Francie uh, and you met in Atlanta. Can you just so, tell yeah, a little bit I'm of background? So, yeah, I'm in sales management. I, I, I'm in the, been in the flooring industry for about 14 or 15 years. Mm-hmm. And we had a, there's a big floor covering show in Atlanta because Dalton, Georgia, Northwest Georgia is the home of, of floor covering. Right. And so that's where we met. And I saw her, her tag said Southern Pines. And I was like, all right, her name's Francie. Uh-huh. She's from Southern Pines. Uh-huh. I'm, I liked her and, already. And shy. Did you have to like? No, really we just kind of. She's so wonderful. Was she you know? hard she's, to get to talk. No, to get we, her to we talk? hit it off, you know, because I went to school at Georgia Southern. She's from. She went to App State, and that was a big deal to her. Her and her husband are big. Right. Big Huge rivals. Yeah. That's right. Huge That's, she's rivals. always. They're in the same. Me. You're in the same division or the same yeah. league. But, but not yeah. only are, are we that, but we moved to Division One football. That's right. At the same time as each other. That's true. So the rivalry just got bigger. I think y'all were one year ahead of us because you beat Michigan. No, no, was we moved the at the same time. Almost, almost same beat. time. Did you beat Michigan? Oh, you oh, did. Oh, yeah, that was a big one thing. of the best of days of my life. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. So what I'm getting at is, I, you know, she, I thought that um, she would be a good person. to. She's from Asheville, right? So I'm, I, why would you move from Asheville to Southern Pines? So I can right. ask her. You raised children here and all that. Right. So I say all that to say this. I, we, I looked everywhere, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and... I love it down here. It's there's definitely um, 
a mystique about the place. You yeah. know, you can't deny really the mystique about this place if right. you stop and look around for a little bit. But at the end of the day, as much as I love this place, it was what you just said, Chris, that Francie and Bill and Alan and Randy, the people Chris. just wrapped their... Yeah, I just met you, and I like you already. <laughs> they, you really wrapped your arms around me and my family. We could never do what we're doing over there had we not trusted you. I mean, because it's a big deal. Right. And it, so at any of the day, it was the people that made us want to or me and then my you know my i kind of my wife calls me a bulldog i mean she just i just kind of get my way she, she, you might be a bulldog but she's definitely the chairman of the board no doubt about it <laughs> right so it's interesting i've known francie for many years mm -hmm. and in a small town like this relationships get fostered very quickly and we've worked together on many different projects but in doing so we've gotten to know each other as people and like I can make a face and she'll know what I'm thinking and vice versa and I, I know her well enough to know if she's having a good day or a bad day and it's a very intimate community so referrals in an intimate community carry a tremendous amount of responsibility if you're in an urban area everybody knows somebody boom you name a name but it's there's an anonymity that doesn't exist here um, so referrals are well thought of when they come and you knew Nick you met him in Atlanta I guess you got a sense of what he was all about and she's like a matchmaker too we all well, you are. are definitely well we all are yeah. you know we all play the dating game but it's <laughs> but we want to put good people together for for proper um, outcomes and living here is like living on a game board all the chess players sort of know each other you know and every once in a while we bump into each are other are you saying i'm a mover and a shaker already yeah. i've been here for like you're a mover months. yeah you're a mover and shaker <laughs> but uh go ahead Francis. It, it's funny because here, here i was in atlanta to, yep. to conduct some business i'm there for a show right and i meet nick and he's just bombarding me with question after question about this community i'm like wait a minute <laughs> I'm here for floor coverings, <laughs> but he was just a pleasure to talk to. And, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, but one of the first things I told you was uh, when you raise kids here, you know if they're getting in trouble I, in I about the first 10 that. minutes, you're going to know if they've done something wrong, you're going to find out some way. And I, I think that was just immediate appeal for you because that just speaks volumes when other people know your children that mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. enough to call you as a parent and say hey uh mm -hmm. little johnny might have done something that he shouldn't have and and mm -hmm. i've loved raising my kids here jordan was five mm -hmm. peyton was 10 months and we didn't know about noah yet at that right. point and and now my my baby just he graduated, just graduated high, school. high school the young lady that that works for you that she's been i mean she was with us when we were closing i she, i remember her saying you she was telling summer uh, that she said your kids are going to love growing up here and, mm -hmm. and that meant a lot you know coming from her even um before we started to tape the show today i mentioned to uh, francie that you're sitting in the seat that was occupied by mary costanza last week when we had a show which we videotaped on the carousel production which just concluded um at the robert e lee auditorium so Francie knows Mary, knows Mary's mom, knows Mary's dad, knows her younger sister, Sarah, knows all about uh, the way the kids have been brought up, and we were just gushing over what a, a superstar she was. Um, and it's that kind of intimacy, which is it's kind of, it's, um, it's just neat. Um, you're, you're accountable here for, for what you do and who you know, and... Um, it's a, the circles are very small. I think it must take a, 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 the like-minded individuals to settle here because, like I said, it, you have to go out of your way to get here. And unless you're mobile, kind of like me, or you have a business here, it's kind of hard to live here. I mean, and you travel a lot. Oh yeah, I do. So um, your children are seven and three. Six, six, and six three. and three. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, uh, Paisley and Ian. Um, did you have? Um, a difficult time convincing your wife Summer um, did she see what you saw uh, because uh, it takes two so we've moved we June 3rd was our 11th year our 11th anniversary and I think we've moved nine times oh my goodness. she is the champion 
of all packers and movers. Oh, my goodness. But she laid down the law this time. Well, she was a li- I mean, I think we always have had a passion to do what we're doing, but we both like the charm of an old house, but we also don't like typically the maintenance and, and maybe that it's not working properly of an old house. So, um, again, had it not been for Francie and you and, mm-hmm. and, and Bill and Alan and the trust that we had, there, we wouldn't, there's no way we would do this. I think after, you know, we had some conversations on the phone. I mean, it, she, she, it, you know, we're big. Think, trust is a big deal to us, and we we trusted that it was going to be okay. You yeah. Know? So she was she was okay with it. Um, the town is uh, so friendly and so small that Chris, you're very familiar. Just by you and I talking or emailing the other day, you were very familiar with the property mm-hmm. uh, because you happen to know someone who had lived there uh, previously. Um, the neighbors all want to know what's going on there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, and that so that's another thing. The neighbors have all of them have come up, and I, I can't think of any time anywhere we've lived where they ha, where they have done that. Right. And and they come over and and ask a lot of questions. They're very interested, and and that's important, you know. So we nice know that they're probably nosy? wondering. Huh? Is that a nice way to say nosy? Yeah. yeah. Well. We that's have, okay. We I have mean, a lot of nosiness. In that's all right. I, a lot of my, a lot of my good friends are very nosy. So yeah, that's yeah. okay. When I Chris? moved, when I moved here, I had to put down a black cloud about three months after I moved here, and four women that I knew vaguely showed up in tears at my doorstep <gasps> to be with me. Uh huh. Wow. One brought me cookies in in the rain. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. It's it, a neat it, town. It is. That's the kind That's of thing that happens on a regular basis. Yeah, we want to come back. We want to talk a little bit about the home because it's a it's a home that's just full of character. Francie had had some experience with a particular home prior to ever meeting Nick, so she actually had an idea of the blueprint of the home and what could be done. Um, and Chris, I want to talk with you a little bit more about your motivation. We want to talk about the process that you went through in putting together some um, structured financing uh, with uh, Randy Hunt and Alan Walters, people who are doing this massive renovation for you, Um, and um, and Sue. Over there at Capitol. I mean, she, she, I know she jumped through hoops to make this happen, and and at the speed at which it happened, really. It was very impressive. We're going to come back in the second set. This is All Things More County. Welcome back um, to All Things More County. We're talking about um, uh, Nick Marshburn and his family um, moving here into Southern Pines into the Knollwood area. And their discovery of the town, um, their meeting with Francie, some serendipitous uh, things that happened along the way, and uh, an attraction to a property that um, kind of drew you in. Um, I don't know if it drew you in more or Well, there's summer. a mystique about the property. Yeah. It, it's similar to, uh, in a good way, you know, yeah. not creepy. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> so, that, so that drew me to... The property. It took a little while for summer. I think. In fact, I've wa- I, n- I noticed you one time, just walking around the property, mm-hmm. almost taking it in, almost like I I would. Right. Because um, I think you noticed the same mystique. The the property is uh, one point three four acres. The topography of the property is outstanding because so much of it is level. Yet the house sits up on a plateau, where um, it climbs up in the front yard. And sits high, but then the entire backyard is flat as a pancake, and it's got a guest cottage uh, on the property. And as you drive up the driveway, which is the side entrance, you come up on this fancy, I guess, this 1940 period home, um, which you had seen with me over time uh, for different reasons. But you already had, I you you walk into a house and already you have ideas before you even get through it which walls are going to come down. and um, This home, uh, you could see the, the vision for this home. 
Oh, absolutely. I, I had already redone it in my head. Yeah, that's what I and figured. Be- <laughs> that's... Because I had actually visited it with a friend uh-huh. who, who wanted a period home. That's right. Um, she wasn't quite ready to pull the trigger yet. But we talked about all the different things that we could do with that house. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, what Nick's doing is about 85% of what she would have done as well. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Is that okay with you that it's not 100%? It is okay with me because it probably was the 15% that we argued about. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's a great house with a lot of charm. It's actually is a privilege for you to be able to buy this house. I sure feel that way. And I know you know that. And and you can just tell your heart's in it as well. And that's what this house was just sitting there waiting on, a family who who just would appreciate it to to its last little stud. So uh, I just couldn't be more excited. My son loves it. I mean, he's he's like in love with the place yeah he's a so man cool. of few words already but he, you can just watch him and he's just running all over the place the kids spend a lot of time outside ian does not paisley oh is that right she's, she's on, an inside girl she's online she's yes playing video games and such yes uh, animal jam <laughs> well we um chris we had um this won't come as a surprise to you but um in identifying the home and doing in normal inspections you're going to run into some issues with a home built in the 40s or the 50s or the 30s um, and like so many homes in the Knollwood area oil tanks the house ran on two I mean active oil tanks mm-hmm. um, there were some um, issues about what they were going to do and so they decided to um, disengage the tanks extrapolate them that was a show Mm-hmm. Just to, and they were side by side, and um, they decided that uh, with the renovation that they're doing. Who was that again? That did uh, Frank McNeil. He did a great job. McNeil, another mountaineer. Another. That's mountaineer. right. I remember that, and he did a great job. And he was he. Do you know Frank? Yes. Yeah. Not well, but I know of him. Well, yeah, I've worked. Wonderful, wonderful guy. Um, and he went to App State. Oh, yes, he did. So he's instantly elevated. If mm-hmm. you live in Bronxville, mm-hmm. New York, and now. I grew up in northern New Jersey. Right. And if I heard of Appalachian State. And you pronounced and I did, it correctly. And yeah. I did. Guess what I thought? It was it was on Mars. It right. was, I mean, in they the made Northeast. Shine down there. You all have to understand in the Northeast, we have colleges and universities. Uh, Columbia, uh, Haverford, Lafayette, Lehigh, Princeton. When we hear of George this or <laughs> Alabama that. You just think of football? We, we go, yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. And then if you look at the New York Times the next day and you look for football scores, they're on page 48 of the paper. It, it's, it's a different culture. Well, and it's not just App State <laughs> or those schools. Our, our community college in this town yep. is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. And I asked this woman one time if they ever saw Dr. Dempsey, who is president of the school, and he said, yeah, he teaches my freshman history class. Right. And you, you don't get that at Lafayette or Haverford or That's true. Bucknell. That's oh, see, you know, he knows them all. Uh, the Northeast is like a different world from the Southeast, isn't it? And we chose to be here, didn't we? And we I, did. I, we, and have, we have found that those folks living in the Northeast tend to migrate towards professional teams, uh-huh. where That's in right. the Southeast we love our college sports. That is correct. And Atlanta uh, has a tough time where you have the Braves and the Falcons and the Hawks. Yeah. They have a tough time filling those stadiums, yeah. even when they're doing good. Yeah. The Braves went on a long run. They could not get people in playoffs because of Georgia Tech, Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, the SEC. Is you so, look at the Georgia Dome on a given Saturday. It's pretty packed. And they packed. just built the Mercedes-Benz stone or place next to, them, to it. You know what scares me? Um, in Moore County, we have about five different generations living here, all the way from the Civics all the way down. I read a study the other day, Chris, you might know something about this, that millennials, which is one of the most written about and spoken about groups of people who are infiltrating. They get blamed for in- everything. Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> what, th- what this guy said was they are not into athletics. They're not into sports. They don't follow teams. They don't, you know, we all grew up with, uh, mem- I was a Met fan, God, you know, help me. <laughs> Uh, Better than being a Yankee fan. You're a, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, it's unpleasant. But there, uh, the elite, there are no allegiances with the millennials like there were with um, the baby boomers right. coming up. Um, it, it cause for concern with all these TV packages. 
that's why some of the stadiums are not so crowded. You can just sit at home and, and mm -hmm. flick, flick, flip, and pick up, watch anything HD you want. HD stadium. Would, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Um, but you are, uh, in Southern Pines, your home is sort of like a walk into yesteryear. But when you're done with the home, tell us some of the things you're planning to do. Because the home, y you basically are redoing it, but you're keeping the structure. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I would say my wife and Paisley, that Paisley, when we moved, she said, I don't care where we move. I just want a pool in my own bathroom. She's like five years old when <laughs> she said that. Wow. So we will eventually put in a pool. Uh -huh. uh, my mom bathroom is... bathroom too, right? <laughs> no, she, uh, she got a Jack and Jill. In it, okay. So yeah. that's as good as we could do. But um, my mom's big into gardening and... She's got, you know, basically a, a 30 year on long standing gardening club group mm -hmm. back in Atlanta. Now she's since moved up to Ash County, um, but they, she still keeps in touch with them. And there are gardener, gardeners and they have a dinner. So I will have her help me with the landscaping. And one of their friends is a master gardener. So she'll come over, and there's just so much potential on there. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably do a lot of – I hope to live here for the rest of my life. I mean, mm -hmm. I really do. So You work for um, Mohawk? I do. And you're a young guy, but you're an old soul. Because most uh, most people his age, Francie, I found, they want something new. They want, you know, high-tech, uh, move-in ready. And you're living in this – adorable little cottage but it can be a little claustrophobic and you you you're working with randy hunt and alan walter they're fantastic they're fantastic yeah um when you're done with the home you're you're changing the roof line are you changing the roof line or are you just changing the upstairs so we i met with alan this morning and we are taking the whole roof off of that thing so the, oh the people my. in Knollwood are just going to be what in the world's <laughs> going on but we i knew that information prior i didn't even want to tell him we, no i thought we were doing did. that in the first place but we had to because the ceilings up upstairs were maybe i don't even know if they were they were they seven were feet tall so summer that was actually you were asking me about get, convincing summer yeah that was the breaking point if we could not even if we couldn't move it up to eight feet it wouldn't happen and so uh, they were trying to find a way to not have to do that but a after talking to alan he said really it's not going to be all that much costly with what they're doing anyways and it's going to be the right thing to do so sometimes it's easier just to take what's there off instead of trying to make something that's their work and this this is going to be a, a better situation have you been over there francine lately mm -hmm. seen it like have you seen it in the last couple of weeks mm, it's probably been a little more than two you weeks i'm gonna head over after i need to after, I need to. after, after the good. show a little bit of a war zone right? have, come on have over. you seen it Chris? you need to come over yeah I've driven by. are you a walker are you out uh, and about in sometimes cause, yeah because that neighborhood is uh the is world's best neighborhood. walking neighborhood i think I've, i mean isn't it oh it's fantastic i haven't walked yet but do you have I, dogs yet we will not have dogs in our house oh good luck with that right <laughs> really you won't no i mean if, if me and summer have anything to do with it when i tell people that they're like oh, i don't know if i like you so much anymore i'm we're just not dog okay. people <laughs> I, th I thought the kids would just go crazy with that yard I mean, we, you know, if we had a dog, I think we would want an outside dog, but that's not that even in... Yeah. Not kosher in this area. Yeah. yeah. No. So, so I saw Alan's plans, his final plans, and what I saw was exhilarating. It looked sort of like a southern plantation, um, antebellum, but small. Re mm -hmm. I mean, not uh, in any shape or form ostentatious, but, but reserved, um, understated. But stately. It's not a big house, but we are adding a garage and a room over the garage and a master bath. So we're adding a few hundred square feet. But no, I mean, yeah. I think it's 2,400 square feet, 25. It's going to be just right. shy of 3,000, I think, when we're right. done. Right. Um, all this emanated from you meeting Francie in Atlanta. Uh, what would have happened? Where would you have gone had you not had that uh, conversation? I'm just curious. Uh, Winston Salem, I think. I think that's. I mean, that's where I, we really liked, or I liked it. Yep. I can convince someone to do just most anything, usually. <laughs> uh, she must love this man. Uh, you know, they're recording this, right? Not sure about, I don't know about that. She's, <laughs> uh, so you're, so Summer is, she's very, very smart. She's got a point of view that is out there for all to see, and she's, she's very sweet about it, but she's very firm. 
and uh, I have a lot of respect for her. She's, I think, once she got on board, she was all in. Oh, she's she's into it now. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I think Nick was fortunate to find a, a beautiful woman who was adventurous, and would would go along. Well, it was a miracle. The whole uh, the whole our whole story was a miracle, and she's changed my life. I mean, I, there's awesome. no question about it that I would not be sitting here right now had it not been for Summer. Right. Yeah. We're going to be back in the third set. This is all things Moore County. In the middle of our street, our house. In the middle of our, our house, it has a crown. When we would have such a very good time, such a fine time, such a happy time. Right. And I don't remember how old it was. It was the day away, then we'd say, Bring them to the room as we are. It was Arnold's and it was with three guys, all of whom had Arnold's home phone number. Like, I'm the one who doesn't know Arnold Palmer. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Dodson, Jim, um, Jim Dodson. Tom Stewart, and um, Stephen Boyd, who worked at the resort. Wow. We're back. I think we're back. And no no bumper music needed. It's okay. We're just um, um, Knollwood, where um, both Chris and Nick live, um, you know, is right in the shadow of pine needles and mid pines. And there's a ton of history. Um, and you're a golfer, Nick, aren't you? I am. Have you Not been much o- anymore since I took on this new job, but uh-huh. things are starting to turn around, so I'll start playing more. Um, have you been over to Pine Needles? I have. Pine, have you played? I played Pine Needles, and then I want to play Mid Pines, but I plan on joining. Does your son have a choice? I think he's going to be a golfer. So yeah. another reason why we moved here was I'm working on my retirement package, which is Ian. Um, he's He was born with a swing, so we'll see. If is he, that right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, that the, and Chris, you used to you have a history with pine needles. Um, you used um, to come down with the golfaris. I used to golf hardy about seventeen years ago, and when Miss Bell was still actually teaching. Yes. Um, was Jan Pat McGowan, who's a former touring pro, is very involved in this great, great program, and um, uh, it's mostly for women actually the golf hardy, but they have couples and they have co-ed and yeah, and um, you're gonna love mid pines. The the eighteenth of mid pines is about. The the best finishing hole right. in the county. Gorgeous. Um, and both courses, Don Ross. And Don Ross used to be your neighbor. He <laughs> lived in, a couple years ago. He lived in the house that Bill Smith lives in now. I did that? not know that. Did he? Re- I did not know that. How come I didn't know that? That's why he brought me here. And when he, <laughs> sa- and when he said a couple of years ago, uh, he was being facetious. I know, I know Donald Ross. I mean, I don't know, when, I, don't, no. I don't know him, but I don't know when he died. But I figured it was, it had to have been some time ago. I don't know either. Probably in the early sixties, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll look into it. For for people who love golf, um, I know, I think we all do. Um, Even Francie. Mm. <laughs> um, if the home needs design work, she loves golf. No. Right, that's exactly right. Right. Um, in our world, we have so many new golf courses, and we have homes being built, uh, clear cut, and homes all over the golf courses. In Knollwood, you're in a neighborhood, and oh, by the way, there's a golf course that sort of meanders out from the neighborhood. It, it's the most natural setting you could ever imagine. Um, and I think that's one of the big allures of why people come down here, because it looks like the golf course was always part of the neighborhood. Well, it was. I mean, it's there long before my house was built. And, um, that's right. Even before your house was built. Um, and being northerners, it reminds me of a New England golf course. That's right. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and Donald Ross course is all over the Northeast, mm-hmm. uh, which I was fortunate to grow up on one of them. And so Beth I Beth felt- Page is a Donald Ross, right? Isn't Beth Page black? Uh, I don't know that. Um, I think it. I think it. I think so. I don't know for sure, but I think it is. Okay. I, I mean, growing up on a Donald Ross course in northern New Jersey, um, it it was easy for me when I first came here in 1979. To pl- the first day I got here, the next morning I played golf at Pine Needles with Bonnie and Sally Austin, uh, who was a aspiring pro at the time, a college golfer, and she became a UNC coach. Mm-hmm. A lot, a lot of history here. Um, so you're you're right in that neighborhood, and you'll learn more about it. You'll know more about it than uh, we will in a few in a few years. Pretty, you'll be quoting things. <laughs> um, the um, the process of your um, acquisition was, you, you know, you find the house, you identified it. There were some um, not missteps, but some rigmarole, some obstacles. Um, it wasn't 
as smooth as we would have liked it to have been. There were some issues, but we got to the finish line. It was a big project, and again, um, it would not have been able to happen had it not been for Francie and right. Bill um, and and Sue Bruton. Sue I mean, Bruton, she was Capital fat, One, really. And again, the speed at which Capital One and, and uh, Alan and Bill were able to, to to communicate and get everything done, I was pretty impressed with. I mean. Yeah. You know, people make fun of us in the South for being slow, right? Well, th th this was th pretty fast and furious for what we were doing. So when Bill's connected with something, you've got to move double time. Really? That's, oh, yeah. That's the Brooklyn in me that comes out. That's but, the type A in you that comes yeah. out. But, but, but there's something else. Um, the relationship with Francie um, or with some of the, the very good vendors that she works with down here, we all know each other. So we're all personally responsible to one another, and we you have to do what you have to do what you say you're going to do, and you care, and you don't want to be the reason why something yeah. doesn't work or, yeah. or work out. Yeah, yeah, and but you also care, mm -hmm. and you are um, very proactive, um, and even if you couldn't be here the whole time, you were always in communication, and you had a timeline. I mean, you have a little. Brooklyn and you, whether you like to, <laughs> whether you were in North Texas or Georgia Southern, there was a little bit of Brooklyn in you too. I kind of like that. It's a good I've thing. I've never met a person from New York that I didn't like. <laughs> I, I, I haven't. Is that They're right? They're always very interesting. Yeah. That's See that? Trip. Yeah. Chris, yeah, you, well. <laughs> how you grew up in, in Westchester? In Pretty much. Bronxville? I was born in Washington, but grew up in, in Westchester, just north yeah. of the city. And I was in Tenafly, New Jersey, so we were close. Mm -hmm. Um we, New Yorkers, Northerners are very provincial. They think that Baltimore is the Deep South and Mississippi is South America. Mm -hmm. right. So how long did you live in the New York area? Because it, you went to D.C. from there and then yeah, came down? Yeah, I moved down for college and I was there for almost 30 years in D.C. Yeah. Um, but I've always, I've always been a sort of misplaced Southerner. I belonged here all along. And um, down... New York's a good place to be from, and um, I enjoy it, but my sensibilities are more Southern in nature. My right. politics aren't, but, but my <laughs> my uh, sensibilities are. I, right. I guess you get along with Bill then really well. <laughs> <laughs> they will, that's for sure. And um, you, have, um, you have a gig. You're a writer. Um, you, were, you have a, a pretty varied background. Um, you sort of evolved from... I, I worked on Capitol Hill, worked on presidential campaign, then on Capitol Hill, and then as a lobbyist and PR hack. Right. And then um, I had an illness where I lost my voice and couldn't be a fast-talking New Yorker anymore <laughs> and fell back on real estate for a while. And right. uh, at the peak of the market, I worked great. And um, uh, a New Yorker coming down here to sell real estate, you know, mm -hmm. is a is a plus. Um um, but I wanted a slower lifestyle. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to live in a small town. Right. Um, I enjoy being closer to family. Although right. when I told friends I was moving, they said, "But they drive you nuts." And I said, "Yeah, but I'd rather have them close by anyway." And and uh, yeah. that's been a treat to be near my mom in her later years and and be able to help my sister. You know, there are a lot, fancy. Uh, there are a lot of subcultures living here in Moore County. I mean, golf is certainly one of them. Equine activities is another. Writing is another. There's a big subculture of writers here emanating from the Weymouth House. Mm -hmm. um, there's a literary uh, sensibility in Moore County. Um, uh, there are workshops for children, actually. They have writing workshops. Um, lots of different things going on here besides... This, this town has... Big town, big city uh -huh. culture. Uh -huh. Interesting. Um, that it's not put on by any stretch of the imagination. The arts That's right. are amazing. The That's theater right. is great. Right. Um, and the writing is good. The, the Pine Straw magazine um, is phenomenal. Jim Dodson, the editor there, has published something like 11 books, um, mostly about golf, but about other things also. And yep. So, what's um, the secret going to get out about? Well, we don't, we want, don't, want, yeah, we don't want it to get out. We, no. Yeah, keep that to yourself. Okay. So there's something you just touched on. Um, uh, since but I'm, I take it you guys like me enough that you know I'm allowed. I was you, allowed to move down here. We'll let you so sign I, the pledge card later on. <laughs> <laughs> I moved here uh, permanently in 1999, and um, there's been a lot of changes since then. 
So there is also, you have two factions in Southern Pines. You have uh, people who want to preserve things exactly the way they were, uh, and you have people who want growth at you know any cost to keep expanding the, the living base, the taxpayer base. And then you have the people in the middle who want intelligent growth. I mean, Chris, you must be wrapped in with people that you know. Hopefully intelligent growth. I, intelligent I feel growth. I've been here long enough to know that, that Aberdeen changed dramatically in the last 20 years and stopped being a small southern town and became this strip mall. And, um, right. I mean, only realtors and, and police officers know the difference between Aberdeen or between Southern Pines and Piners, but Aberdeen is clearly a different animal. <laughs> um, I can't say that. You can. I can, yeah. I mean, there are, there are great parts of Aberdeen, but I think yep. the, all the fast food places. Um, Anywhere are, USA, I mean, with has all A those. friend visited from Alabama, and he, um, was after he retired from watching, and he said, this is the South I know, not where you live, but. Right. Highway the, one. Highway well, one. Highway one. But you know, kudos to a- Aberdeen. The downtown area of Aberdeen That's is great. as charming mm-hmm. um, well, as I'll eclectic. Say, I will say this: had it not been for there being those places, Summer probably would not have wanted to move down here. Is that, that's is that important. Right? Oh yeah, that, that to have those those conveniences mm-hmm. close you have to by. Have groceries with kids. A, another interesting thing about Moore County is you do have Pinehurst and Southern Pines, and then Aberdeen there in the middle, mm-hmm. where I mean it's convenient to, to, yes. to go sure. get some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, and now with the road changing on uh, one, and f- there's a lot of a lot now. of changes mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Francie, you've had a lot of changes in. Uh, your tenure here, um, you actually just went through a name change on your business. We did. We uh, rebranded as of the beginning of this year. Right. Our old name was Total Design Solutions. A lot of people know us by that name, but we have rebranded to Total House and Flooring, um, mainly because the name did not give the a best description of what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, design to some people can mean website design, landscape design, and mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people just didn't know the large scope of, of what we do, so we feel like our new name has encompassed. She ha- uh, you have one of the the coolest showrooms in all of Moore County. Oh, thank you. Uh, right off Morganton Road. On Morganton Road. On Morganton Road. Uh, displays in there. Bring them on. So that's we'll interesting. So you all work together, too. So you're a, a supplier of Mohawk. I am. Okay. I'm a retailer of Mohawk. And a lot of different technology has infiltrated uh, Nick's into Nick's business. The, the and especially, your and Nick is uh, coming from the hard segment, but from the carpet segment is where the the technology is just phenomenal uh-huh. over the last five to seven years. We've um, done a lot in the hard service too. We've invested hundreds of billions of dollars in the last couple of years in um, luxury vinyl plank technology and. Um, and enhanced engineered we're calling our new hardwood which is basically the future of engineered hardwoods our laminate that has an, a water spill that you that's the buzzword now that we're mm-hmm. doing so there is just tons of innovation um, and mohawk really we're the world's largest floor covering company and we do have a lot of ties to north carolina we own karistan which is in eden north carolina which is probably the, the world's finest right. machine made right. carpet um, our laminate plant is in thomasville north carolina and we we get our pine from Moncure, and it goes to Mount Gilead. And so there's a lot of ties from my company in the state of North Carolina, which I'm proud of, too. Yeah. Um, has Summer been into your showroom yet? Mm-hmm. Is that a good thing? Yeah. 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 Well, actually, she it, it, was a, it, it was a very, very unique situation that okay. instead of me sending them out with samples, they actually walked in the in. door you with samples. Yeah, and I think that was hard for Francie because we basically had, we know some of the major things we are, the decisions have been made, but we're going to need Francie. We talked about it this morning tremendously in the interior decorating and pulling everything together. We're going to put their we, kitchen together, too. Can, can I... Um, tell you that you're making a good call because I went through this experience with her in 2013 and um, the result is that um, a historic uh, Dr. Bush's home. Stunning. Isn't it? I mean. So I have to go by and see it. I can't oh my gosh. It. You need to come by. Uh, uh, we actually, Chris, we had, uh, we had leased it for two years to an attorney and his mm-hmm. wife and they've moved to Fort Pope, Louisiana. Um, 
and we have now restored it. It's back to its seen condition when it was completed. When Pine Straw did an article, um, Gavin Powers had written a great story. And about there was a house tour, too. Is that the, the, the uh, EDS tour? or the Your house was on the EDS tour? Yes, it was. How yeah. did you? Yes, it was. It was on the tour. Yes, it was. I uh, said I could have done this, and that would have been wrong. It was... <laughs> It was uh, a privilege to do it, to have mm-hmm. that house on, and it was so close to um, Episcopal, and um, it, it was quite something to see. Mm-hmm. I was uh, like a proud, a proud papa, um, but Francie, um, it, it, it is as much her home as it is mine with what she's done. I met you on that tour. You were in the kitchen. That's why you look familiar to me. Is I that knew right? there was something. I told you when you walked in. Hey, you you were there familiar. on the tour? Yeah. Well, I didn't I yeah. have your yeah. card. Yeah, Bill had me parked in the kitchen so I could tell Is folks right? about some of the decisions that we made. To, we, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. I found the pretty blonde on the tour. How's that? <laughs> uh-huh. I'll tell you what. Um, you need to bring Summer down. We need to go to the Bush Cottage, and you need to, she needs to see it. Can we see it? Today, this afternoon, or? Uh, I can see it uh, in about maybe in about an hour and a half or okay. so. I've got an appointment, but I yeah, I knew you had an appointment after but, this. But so, let's yeah. let's do that. Um, your when do you expect the house to be completed for you? We closed your, at the end of April, and the contract said five to seven months. So Randy and Alan, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> well, so but that, I think we'll be in before Thanksgiving. I mean, okay. So we should, and, and maybe even before that. And so. they have a lot of witnesses. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm not worried about it one bit. I, I have complete trust in the team that we've assembled. You know, we love having shows, and I've been doing this for nine years, and I so much enjoy when we can speak to people who have come here from other areas to live in anywhere in Moore County and what brought them to the area and, and why it's such a vibrant community. And, um, you know, it's a it's a privilege to be able to uh, have met you, to have worked with you, and then to be able to come here and sit and talk about this. Well, I'm um, honored. I mean, honestly, I, I am. So yeah. I, and I and I so much look forward to. You talked about what do you, what are your future plans? Yeah. Uh, well, when we're finished with the house and and inviting all my friends and family yeah. on a regular basis, to, you know, yeah. to kind of brag about my little discovery here, you know, that's Moore right. County. <laughs> and we're going to give you all the credit. And Francie and I will just stick in the back. We'll be in the background. That's right. Promise. Uh, Nick Marshburn, um, we wish you the best of luck, and we'll we'll all come over and visit your house on Thanksgiving. How's that? I'll we have a party. A oh, we're going to have a party. Chris, uh, no. Chris you're invited yeah. now, hey, so we're going to have a party. Dogs. Put his house on this year's Christmas tour. I could be arranged. Oh, please don't put that much pressure on me. Please. No, I think that would be a great idea. Oh, my and goodness. I, I know his wife would just and be so mother, happy with that suggestion. My mother would completely embrace that. Oh, my and goodness. So, I don't know what you're talking taken about. You've just taken 10 years Christmas off my right life. In this town. Have you given everybody in for Christmas? This is an amazing <laughs> place at Christmas. It awesome. really is. Awesome. Thanksgiving to Christmas yeah. is magical here for sure. Uh, Chris Larson, it's a pleasure. I'm so glad you could come on. And you too. I bet you we can think of a couple of reasons to get you back. Uh, Francie Thompson, um, you might go down as the most frequent guest. You and, you and Kirsten Foyles. Um, the door is always open and um, wish you a lot of luck at Tuttle House and Flooring. Thank you. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing it. Thanks for listening. This is All Things More County. Have a great week.